Okay, so this is the second video of um, system analysis and design. So let's go into the first slide. You have to yap so much over here. Come on, let's just go. Okay. So now uh, we're going to talk about investigation. Now, I already discussed in the previous like um, part that you know you have all these different um, ways, steps that you can design or develop a system. But now we're going to concentrate on the five-step model, the traditional model. So all these slides now are going to complete, or we're going to talk about the traditional model. Now, starting with the traditional model, there's five steps, right? The first step is investigation. So now we're going to talk about the investigation stage. So investigation is the first step, it's the first step, right? So now you need to develop the whole system in the business. You need to understand the problem, right? You need to know that is this problem worth solving, right? You need to know is it um, like what solutions can I use? You know, you have to basically think of this problem and get a lot of information of this problem, right? So now um, system investigation, right? You identify potential problems. If I have to really like think of one sentence to describe this first stage is to identify the problem literally that's the stage right and and you have to know whether to pursue this problem to get, like to solve this problem that's basically investigation right? so what is the problem does this new system solve what opportunity does it provide what does it cut what the risk it involve so you're looking at the cost the risk because you want to know is this problem worth solving right now who's involved in the system investigation all these five steps, all these people are involved, right? All five steps, I should just know that. System analysis is the main person. He will design it like an architecture, sees, uh, communicate to all the employees, managers about his whole system, get a very, very good understanding of his whole system, how it works, and so on. So, when you finish the investigation stage, you produce a report. In fact, every stage, five steps, you produce a report. So when you produce a report after the investigation stage, you call it the system investigation request. So this includes the problems for the system, objectives for the investigation, overview of the proposed system, expected cost. So in this investigation, you're basically going to state the problem, right, that you encountered. And also you're going to say, like, why you're pursuing it and so on, right? Also, you need to know, is it feasible? Now, you might think, what is feasible? It means whether you need to solve this problem. Because if it's costing you too much to solve this problem, you have to leave it out. Don't put this new system in place. So there's one, two, three, four, five things here in feasibility. So if you get something called a feasible analysis. Right? All five things over here, basically, if they all meet the criteria, you continue to solve this problem, you can build this whole system. Number one is technical, right? So technically, it's like... Hmm, how do I say it? Is it like worth it doing? Like, okay, so they do. Um, so technically means that is it worth actually doing this? Technically speaking, is it worth doing this? That's what technical means, right? Um, economical, it must be cheap. It must be expensive. If it's too expensive, rather not do this whole system, new system. Legal, some systems are illegal in certain countries, right? So make sure it's legal. Operational. Could you make it operational? So, like, could you operate it? For example, if you are in a small business that gets flooded all the time, is it, will it be good for you to get an expensive system in place? No. It'll be hard to operate the system over there because it gets flooded. Um, schedule, is it going to be completed in time or is it going to be late? You know, all those are schedules, right? So, all these will decide whether to do the project or not, right? Cost of fixing requirement. I said on my previous part, this stage of real the first investigation, if you make a mistake, the cost is very, very low. But if you make a mistake of your further steps, it's very, very expensive, right? And all these codes of your are just stupid because they're not going to motivate you. Writing the code isn't the problem. Understanding the problem is the problem. <laughs> Let me make my, my, my own code. <clears throat> Learning Eastern 103 is not a problem. It's the coding that is the problem. You see, it doesn't make sense, these codes. All these codes don't make sense. Anyway, hey, another quote here. The importance of getting requirements right at the outset cannot be overstated. I don't understand. Shakespeare, whoever is watching this, could do nothing. Okay. So the investigation stage, it's over, right? We finished, define the problem. Need to see if it's worth pursuing. 
Now we're saying, okay, we're done. It's worth pursuing, right? So now we're going to the second step, system analysis. So the second step, system analysis, as you can see, second step, what we're going to do now is this. We're going to look at how to solve the problem. We're going to look at what the new system needs, the requirements of the new system. And we're going to review the existing system in the business. Huh? So the current system, the new system, okay. Everyone over here is involved. I told you all the steps, they're all involved. System analysis, um, everyone is involved, right? External, internal, all that. Um, internal customers, managers, employees. So all these are internal, external sources. All I told you, all people are involved. Another name for all people in the business is called stakeholders, right? Mm. So system analysis, right? So you need to know how to basically solve this problem. So you need to go communicate to everyone. You need to go communicate to the employees, the managers, collect data, right? You need to also um, say what requirements are there for the new system. So the way you do this is ask people, listen here, what is this new system that we're implementing? I want to know exactly what you need in this new system. So I can get this information as a system analysis and I can basically send this to people coding to like code the system, right? So you're basically finding needs for this new system, what this new system must be. So when you get all this information, you can give it to the people who's making the system, right? Data collection is interview, observe, and questionnaires. Now, um, interview is easy, right? Observe and questionnaires, yeah. Questionnaires you do when it's a large geo jack, jack, geographical area. Yeah, geographical area. Different places you do questionnaires. Observe means you're basically looking at the processes in the business. So, like, you're looking at how things are done in the business with your eyes. And interview, you can interview people, right? Um, develop models for requirements, critical one, not really anything useful. Okay, defining system requirements. So you need to need, need, uh, know what are the new system requirements. This new system which you can put in the business, what are the requirements? Um, modeling. Now, to know what are the requirements of this whole system, it's very, very hard to just picture it without drawing. So um, you have to draw. So some, you, a good thing to use, it's called a, it's called a modeling. So modeling data by using, okay. So you can do this whole modeling by something called an entity relationship diagram. Right? We're probably gonna learn about this more. But basically doctor, patient, so it shows how things are linked to each other, what relationships they have, right? Um, system analysis review. Uh, oh yeah, so after you've done the analysis, you do a report. I told you each stage of the thing, five stages, do a report. So now what you're gonna do is, after you analyze her, uh, I'm just gonna check. Yeah, so this is the last stage. Huh? The system analysis report is presented to the product steering team of the community to stop, revise, or go forward with the system development project, the product sponsor. Okay, so basically your report will basically consist of, it basically consists of what the new project needs. I mean, sorry, new system needs, right? The new system needs, um, it's a go ahead, like let's go to the next stage and all that, right? Now you're in the design stage. So now the, now you know you're done with all that, right? Finding out what it needs and all that. Now you're actually making the system. I repeat, making the system. So in the design step, right? You will look at the how will the system solve the problem. So you'll basically make the system, right? How the system will solve the problem? You're going to make the system. Uh, design stage so this is application software so all this right you need to know what software to use what application to use huh? what user interfaces right some might be a menu interface right some might be a coding graphical in all these things right what databases to use so basically you literally actually making this whole system code come on man all these codes you know system design is just a model building in the view in the wall. I don't know what's this ish just it wasn't during and I, I don't know how what shakespeare is this right even shakespeare if you woke up from his grave couldn't even um an analyze i and analyze this right okay um example requirement the user must be able to put his da order data into the system okay so now from the analysis stage you need to know or you have known now that the customer needs to put 
information on like this whole system right? so now in the design stage you'll be like okay perfect so how do I create this whole system where they can put their um, information in? You can either have a keyboard attached to the system, a touch screen, a voice recognition. So people involved, it's everyone, right? Oh, very, very important, yeah? Uh, no users are involved, right? Because when designing over here, obviously the people who use the software or the system won't be involved in the de design stage. They're not making it. They don't have the experience, huh? Um, logical and physical design very important logical design is basically designing the functions of the system what the system will do very important physical design is the requirements of the actual components of the system for example what software it must use what hard drive it must use how much ram must there be how much of storage must there be that's physical logical is the purpose of the system huh so example, the system must um, record how many people walked out from the shop. That's a logical design. Designing phase. So there's different way you can design stuff in your um, whole software thing, right? Your system. It can be an interface design. Interface design is simple. Like if you look at your phone, you look at your home screen, that's an interface. When you click on the app, it opens, that's an interface. But it also could be a uh, designer. Okay, they're missing one here. Yeah? interface design interface or you could have a coding interface i forgot what it's called um yeah it's called a coding if you actually know i don't know what the right, right name is it's called a oh prompt command oh yeah command prompt interface so you literally write code to like get something so instead of like command prompt okay so people do um stats you know sas where you have to code to get things from the database that's basically what it is. So you have to use code to get things on the system. You can't like press an image and it'll pop, pop up. You know what you want, right? Um, design phase, interface design. Yeah. So you get a menu driven system. It's like your cell phone, right? It's an interactive, right? Um, design stage, design stage. Uh, okay. So, what are the best when designing a database? Huh, you have to choose the supplier, right? Huh? So, you have to choose a, what supplier to get this database from if you're buying a um a um a system, right? Huh? You have to need to, while you're designing it. Also, you need to know the security risk. You have to make it safe for people to use, prevent it from hackers. You're designing this thing, so right now while you're designing, make sure it's safe for people to use. Install software, install security, all that. Um, design disaster okay so while you're designing this software or system you must also put a disaster recovery plan in it right now what's a recovery plan disaster recovery 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 plan uh, disaster recovery plan okay so I'm not going to skip all this because it says everything over here so the process of anticipating and providing for disasters okay so a disaster the recovery plan okay so there's two things there disaster recovery and disaster planning disaster planning is planning for disaster so in the future something might happen you plan if this happens this is what you do that's a disaster plan disaster recovery is during it so let's say the disaster hit now that all the things you need to do that's a disaster recovery then right? so implementation when the disaster happens so disaster could be anything, could be strikes, could be weather, it could be um, a hostage situation, right? So there's two things that could fit under this disaster recovery. So let's make a scenario. Let's say a storm came and it ripped through your main building where people work. So all the people working there, storm came. Now they came out from the building running. But the manager over there said, listen here, where on the earth are all your employees going? So now there's two things where all the employees can go a hot site or a cold site a hot site is another place where all the employees can go to continue to continue their work so a hot site now what's the difference between a hot and cold site okay i want you to picture this picture a warehouse or a room where there's all computers all like uh cords basically a 
space or a workplace ready for people to use. So right now there's no one there. But as soon as something happens to the main building, so the employees are working and a storm happens, they can travel to this one place over here and start working as if nothing happened. This place got its computers ready, all that. So when a disaster happens, they can go and work there. That's hot site. Cold site, it's where um, this place where they're going to doesn't have any computers. So it's just like a room. So now it takes time, obviously, now, but the employees, the managers have to go and put computers in the room. And then the employees can go to the room and work after the storm happened on the main building. That's a cold site, right? So that's the difference, right? Incremental backup. So incremental backup is like WhatsApp. So you know how WhatsApp every day at like 2 o'clock backs up your chat? So that's incremental backup. It backs up for the day what happened. So right now, my backup, main backup, backed up everything for like 3-4 years, right? Eh? But at 2 o'clock in the morning, it's going to do an incremental backup. Meaning, for that day, all the chats are going to be added to the main backup. So that's incremental backup. So yeah, hot side. See, it's everyone over there is not working. It's waiting for a disaster to happen so all employees can go over here. System design. So you need all the databases, all that, right? Uh, you need to know what design to use. Choose the design options, right? You can read that. So when you're designing stuff, you need to know whether you ac acquisition. So basically what you're buying so what parts you're buying for the system uh design phase final contract so after you design the phase right you need to buy the system if you're going to buy it from a person a supplier you need a contract right uh yes okay so that's it so okay so the next part will be the implementation and review so um, that's it for this part